Dubai annual Frankfurt Motor Show is one of the largest and most important motoring events in the world, with manufacturers spread across the vast and sprawling halls of the mess of Frankfurt, eager to showcase their latest models, as well as future technology. And that is what dominated this 68th show, the necessity for change and responsible motoring for the future. But what was more notable was the number of the big players who were not in attendance this year. The likes of Toyota, Volvo, Nissan, Kia, Peugeot, Citroen, Fiat, Jeep and many others. So it really did open the door for the Germans to dominate proceedings. One of the most anticipated launches of the show was the ID3, which is VW's first battery car in a new assault on electrification. Now in the wake of Volkswagen's, yes, I can't believe we are still talking about a dieselgate scandal, they've even decided to refresh their logo to reinforce that their emission cheating days are well and truly a thing of the past. Utilizing a whole new MEB platform that will form the basis for all future EVs from the brand, the ID3 is slightly larger than the Golf and will come in a variety of battery options to cater for all price points. Comically though, the acceleration and brake pedals have a play and pause button etched in and it's VW's mandate with the ID3 to create EVs that are accessible, that are fun and affordable for the masses. But if you have a wad of cash just burning a hole in your pocket, then Porsche's all-electric Taken is your answer to conscious free driving. Now it's intended to give Tesla's Model 3 a bloody nose, with the most potent version producing 560 kilowatts and 1,050 newton meters, with a claimed 100 kilometer an hour sprint time of just 2.8 seconds. But you know what is curious, is that Porsche have stuck with a standard turbo badging for both derivatives. I'm not too sure about that one. BMW Concept 4 is the new 4 Series in everything but name. Now BMW claims that this concept is 85% representative of what the production version will look like when it debuts next year 2020. Now many would hope that the 15% change will result in the toning down of that bucktooth rendition of their kidney grills. Some say it looks like a beaver, yeah I'm inclined to agree, but BMW's intention with the new 4 Series is to create a clear a distinction in terms of design from the 3 Series on which it is based, and I think that is a great idea. Well, of course, Frankfurt was a showcase of innovation and advancements from the Germans. They weren't the only ones stealing the limelight this year. There were other manufacturers who used Frankfurt as a platform to unveil much talked about models. The new Defender switches from a body-on-frame construction to an aluminium unibody that underpins the Range Rover Sport as well as the Land Rover Discovery. The new Defender is also significantly larger in all dimensions and it will be available in a three-door and five-door arrangement. On offer will be an array of petrol and diesel derivatives, but more notably, there will be a three liter inline six cylinder engine with an electric supercharger and a mild hybrid system. So really all that is left is for Kingsley Holgate to buckle up and set off on one of his mammoth journeys across unforgiving terrains. Now for us South Africans, the reveal of Hyundai's new Grand i10 will hold more clout than the exorbitant showstoppers mentioned earlier. Pictured here is the European spec, but the local arm of Hyundai will import the Indian version called the Grand i10 Neos, which they say will be slightly larger. Now Hyundai claims the new i10 has an energetic and agile look, and it certainly does add some pizzazz into the entry level segment, where rivals like the Suzuki Swift and the Ford Figo can look a little bit dull in contrast. Now while we can't comment on specification at this point, expect the new Grand i10 to be keenly priced and comprehensively specced and should arrive locally in the first half of 2020. 
Some other notable mentions are the Audi RS7 Sportback. Oh, it was just a couple of weeks back that we previewed the A7 at the Festival of Motoring. We said, oh, we can't wait for the RS derivative to arrive, and our enthusiasm is certainly warranted. Featuring a 4-litre V8 with a 48-volt mild hybrid assistance, the RS7 can sprint to 100 km an hour in just 3.6 seconds, and it looks absolutely phenomenal. But if you would like to shave like 0.8 of a second from that sprint time and you are part of the world's wealthiest, then the new Lamborghini Cyan is for you. Now yes, apparently that is the correct way to say it, Cyan. The engineers from St. Agata have buckled under the pressure, releasing their first ever production hybrid. But the purists do not need to despair. Yes, thank you, there's still a screeching V12 engine hidden underneath the Cyan's angular bodywork and linked to a supercapacitator. It is all very futuristic. So too is a Vision EQS from Mercedes-Benz. This previews what will be the electric variant of the S-Class for the future. Not too distant though, as this isn't a fully autonomous runabout with a morphing interior and a powertrain source from science fiction. In fact, it is closer to production than those huge rims suggest. The 2019 Frankfurt International Motor Show was a showcase of brands that are quite clearly going full steam ahead towards an electric future, but also one that highlights the brands that are not quite there just yet, which was evident by their no-show. It was Bob Dylan who said, you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone, for the times, they are a-changing.